Welcome to segment three of Citizens Forum, being filmed on Wednesday, October the 2nd, I hope. Um, our guest in this segment is Werner Simbeck, and we're going to be talking about one of the most important issues in the world today, which is climate change. Last week, I think, uh, the IPCC report came out, the Independent Panel on Climate Change, and you can tell us what it said. It's the intergovernmental, but it, oh. doesn't, it doesn't matter. No. So, so you have uh, a group of scientists who review uh, literature that has been published, peer-reviewed literature, scientific papers. They review a body of evidence. They analyze it for accuracy and what, it, what the trend is, what it says. And they released a new report now. It's the fifth government, intergovernmental uh, report on climate change. And the evidence is becoming overwhelming that climate change is real, it's happening, and that human beings are responsible for the, for the, for the majority of the change that we're observing now. And those observations, I mean, you can point to examples su such as those big floods that we had in, in, in uh, Alberta, those massive floods. You can say, well, that was a freak weather event that has nothing to do with climate change. That may be true. But we'll see more of those freak weather events, which we, we have been we seeing, are seeing, right? More, so it's yeah. not like it's not a uh, it's not a fantasy anymore. Where it's actually coming reality. Just in uh, in the United States, they had a mass flooding event in uh, Boulder, Colorado. Uh, it hasn't been well reported, but it was an unbelievable. It was a one in a thousand year flood. They were saying. You know, last year they had wildfires. This year they had the most amazing floods they uh, nobody has ever seen before. You know, it rained in two days more, more than uh, the entire year gets. You know, so they were, were just overwhelmed with water. So, I mean, there are so many examples where you can see these severe weather events happening more and more and more. And I think everybody's seeing that now. But so, last so, week they yeah. came out with a report that said, I think that now it's 95% certain. Yes. That, and, and you made the point. Yes. So, uh, you know, you, would you go on an airplane where there is a 95% certainty that it will fall down out of the sky? Or would you believe the skeptics, which are on the 5% category, who say, oh, well, it's not proven yet. Well, how much proof do you need? You know, I think we, we insure our house because we know there's a chance it might burn down. There's a chance there might be an earthquake. Here we have the, the leading scientists in the world coming together, reviewing literature, scientific evidence that says to a 95% certainty that climate change is real, it's happening, and the consequences of inaction are severe. We're talking by the end of the century up to a six degrees Celsius increase on average global temperature. Now it ranges between four and six, but if you go to the extreme, because if you look at the last four reports, all the predictions have been wrong, but wrong in the wrong way. They have been ultra conservative. The predictions about uh, the North Pole, the ice cap melting, it's been happening much faster than the last IPCC report had predicted. We're like 50 years ahead already of worst case scenario. So the fact is that now this latest report comes out, it clearly states that, that there's, there's a problem. You know, the problem is us releasing CO2 in form of burning fossil fuels and the reaction is well there isn't one that's the surprising thing the media doesn't re re report on it a adequately the politicians refuse to answer questions on it like our prime minister I mean he's been chased by uh, uh, our journalists and there is no opportunity for them to ask any questions on any topic because it's so tightly controlled and when the journalists do ask the questions, the owners of the media don't report it because this whole thing has passed in the last week as if it never happened. I mean, if you didn't know from the internet or something or people telling you that this, at least for me, you know, the media I follow, what I watch, it, it's like it didn't happen. One of the most important scientific reports probably in human history yeah. and it was completely ignored in this country by the media and the politicians because both of them represent the corporations who are making a huge amount of money from fossil fuels and they don't care if millions of people die they're gonna make their money yeah. so what do we start <clears throat> to do well I think it starts 
that people get, need to get informed. And I, and I can suggest that I'm going to suggest people get either on the internet and read at The Guardian, The Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper has been amazing over the last few months. They reported the Edward Snowden case, uh, that whistleblower from the NSA, who basically uncovered this vast amount of spying apparatus that the United States has in place where they basically spy on everybody. All the time. Right? All the time. And they record everything all the time. And that has always been suspected. There was never any proof of it. Now there is proof. And that story as well has been rather downplayed. You haven't really, there hasn't been much fallout of it. No. Especially in Canada, because we are, we're, we're following suit with what the Americans are doing. We give, we share information. So whatever the Americans want, we give to them and the other way around. So, but there has been no discussion on that front. And that's just an example that when a thing like climate change, which is so serious, and there's going to be so many people, especially in the developing world, is going to be affected by this already. And we're going to have thousands, hundreds of thousands of climate ref refugees. They're going to eventually go on a, get on a boat and try to come here, right? They're going to go north. They're going to go wherever the weather is better. And how are we going to, how are we going to deal with that? I mean, there's so many questions, so many issues to address. Our energy policies should be changing, right? We should be supporting alternative energies. And in Europe, Germany in particular, they're so far ahead of the game when it comes to this, mitigating, changing from fossil fuels to renewables. I mean, we could use them as an example of what's possible and what we, can, what we could all do if we wanted to, if we had political will, but that doesn't exist. Yeah. So once again, the media doesn't tell us what Germany is doing. No. And the politicians in this country are, I don't know, I don't even know what you can call them, just betrayers, traitors, puppets. I don't know what, what words you can call the leaders of our political world. Well, I think it, it, it borders now uh, on, on, on a criminality, really, because they're doing something that inaction will cause lives. People will die, right? And sure, the numbers may be small, but there will be more and the more. The numbers won't be small. The numbers are going to be hundreds of millions of people. Sure, but for just from Canada point of view, in our own country, you know how many people died in that flood in, 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 in Alberta? You know, a handful, yeah. you know, which is terrible. But the point is that those, those numbers, uh, numbers that are affected with their lives are small compared to the ones in the third world. Uh, but you know, our politicians are basically becoming criminally negligent, really, by inaction. Because you need to really address this. You need to have policies that basically looks towards the future and that's really what we need to all be doing. We need to look towards the future. The future is not fossil fuels, no. okay? The future is renewable and the technology is there. Germany would be a perfect example of what's, what can be done in a relatively short period of time, but we need to push our politicians and uh, our, our representatives to basically act on the science because the science is clear now. It's just us now who are in the way or our politi political system is in the way of really changing our habits, changing our policies, and moving towards a, a really a future that we can look forward to. Because, you know, I have a five-year-old son, and I worry for his future, because if we don't change our, our attitude towards fossil fuels, you know, there won't be clean water left to drink, right? There won't be fish in the ocean any anymore to harvest, because they're all going to die. And that's, I'm, not, I'm not, not making this up. I'm not like trying to be alarmist. But this is, if you look at what the IPCC is saying, this is where we're heading. We're heading for mass extin extinction on a global scale in a really short period of time. So th that's my concern. And I wish people would educate themselves and then contact their representatives, write to your politicians. You know, people in Saanich, they're lucky they got Elizabeth May. But there are lots of other writings who they have part from all parties. NDP, conservative, liberal, it doesn't matter. We all should be on the same team when it comes to climate change. So once again, I mean, the thing I would suggest is people start phoning your politicians and phoning the media and telling the media to start reporting the truth on this issue of life and death and tell the politicians, because it's your life and your death and my life and my death that we're talking about here, and telling the politicians to start taking action, municipally, provincially, federally. We've got to turn this around. It's already too late. I'm sure you would agree. The disaster is unfolding and it's not going to stop. 
but yeah. we've still got to reduce our use of fossil fuels. I think there's still opportunity to mitigate harm. I think yes. we could greatly mitigate harm. Yes. But we would, there would have to be an attitude change of really large proportions. But we've waited now so long. I mean, the science has been evolving, I suppose, but we have known about climate change in the 80s, in the late 80s. In the 60s. Right? Well, but officially the okay, let's say the let's 80s. say officially the, the fra phrase was coined in the early 80s uh, or in the late 80s and we've been known about this issue but you know our present government I mean they when this whole thing with uh, Kyoto came about you know the liberals at the time uh, under Chrétien they passed uh, they ratified the Kyoto protocol they adopted it made law of it didn't act on it no did nothing di did not act on it and uh, but the conservatives who are now in power under Stephen Harper, I mean, they were laughing at this whole thing. They thought climate change and the whole idea of, of doing something about climate change was just a waste of time and money. Right? But that's going to bite them because the cost of inaction is going to be far greater than the cost of action. I know? wouldn't say they thought it would be a waste of time and money. I think they were just told by the oil and gas industries that this well, is what you're going to do. And Harper did it because our politicians are ruled by the corporations. I, I suppose, and, and opinions may differ on this. But the point though is though, you know, he has two children, he should be concerned about their future moving forward, right? All of our, all of our uh, uh, future generations are dependent on what we do today. You know, if we basically give them the bill and go, here you go, good luck with it. I mean, that's, that's uh, unacceptable in my opinion, yeah. you know? So, what are some things that we can and should be doing starting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time? <laughs> well, I think everybody can do something in their own lives. You know, yes. you could ride your bicycle, you can walk to work. I mean, it'll be better for your waistline anyway, right? You can change your diet to less meat in your diet yeah. because meat has a large footprint. And I mean, if you go to the internet and you were to search, uh, say, if you go to the David Suzuki Foundation, um, they give lots of examples of what you could do on their website to reduce the amount of carbon that you use. You know, instead of going once a year to Hawaii on vacation, well, maybe you should drive to the Okanagan or drive up island and support the local economy instead of flying far away because, you know, flying is, uh, is, it produces a lot of emissions that so affect the driving. climate. Yes, but it's a lot less. A lot less. A lot yeah. less than uh, uh, flying yeah. to Hawaii or flying to Europe or what have you. So, you know, those vacations, they need to be scaled back to maybe once every five years instead of one every year, you know. Smaller houses? Yeah, smaller houses. I mean, you can retrofit your house. There's all kinds of ways you can do. You can do solar hot water heating. You can provide, I mean, this is something about the smart meters thing that nobody really talks about, but you could do net metering. You can install solar panels on your roof and then the electricity that it generates can be sold back into the grid, making the meter basically run backwards. Well, that's what the smart meters allow you to do, but they're not really advertising that. Uh, you know, that would be one of those few advantages of the smart meter that why I would really encourage that as a technology moving forward. Well, that's forward. interesting because they do do that in Germany, don't they? Absolutely. And they're not moving to smart meters in Germany. Well, they do have smart meters in some I regards. I just read that they're, maybe they're smarter than ours, but not well, uh, a yeah, trans Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I, you know, you, you would have to, I, I, would have, I would have to lie yeah. about that. I don't know exactly what they're using when it comes to smart meters. But y if you do have solar panels installed on your roof, you need to have a meter that can handle the, the f uh, basically selling power right. one back. forwards and backwards. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I would call that a smart meter, but, ah, okay. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, so would I. Um, all, all of those things make sense. It's, it's unfortunately late in the game, but we've still got to do all of those and yes. much, much and more. much, much more. And you know what? There's lots of jobs available in that shift. You know, so there's always this fear that we're going to lose all these jobs by killing the fossil fuel industry. Well, yes, we're going to lose some jobs in that sector, but you know, you're not going to do this overnight. You're going to slowly, year by year, shift to the renewable sector. So you know, you could say, you know, every year, 10% of the fossil fuel profits go into renewables. After 10 years, you switched all the way over, right? Yeah. So if you keep increasing it by 10%, of course we waited now so long, so the change has to be more rapid. The pain in the change will be more, more strongly felt, but I think we owe it to the future generations that we do something, right? And we can do something, there's lots we can do. There's so many options now. 
Well, talk about talk a bit about public transit in in Europe compared to oh, public sure. transit here. Um, I mean, their infrastructure is amazing. I mean, you do not need a vehicle, a, a, a car, in Europe. You can go anywhere you like by train. And when the you say go anywhere, do you mean safely, comfortably? Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's uh, you know some younger uh, people might re remember the whole idea of the Euro uh, the Euro uh, pass. Yeah your train uh, pass. I mean, with that, you can travel throughout Europe. Well, literally, Europe is connected with rail in a way that, you know, we could only dream about that here. Um, you know, it has older infrastructure. It, you know, it goes back. It has a longer history. But they invested a long time ago already in that infrastructure, and they never tore it up. Yeah. You know, here on the island, I mean, we used to have a railway link that went all the way to Deep Cove, you know, but we tore it up. No, um, right. and that was done by the oil, gas, and automobile industries. I suppose, yes. but you know, in Europe they didn't do that. They did not rip up their railway; they kept yes. it, and that has sort of saved them in that regards. And they have an excellent uh, rail system. How about uh, so? So just in 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 within the city transportation in a, in a let's say in a city the size of Victoria, in in Europe. Right, uh, I think you'll see lightweight rail. Light rail will be uh, available. Bike, a lot more bike. Lots of bike paths, yeah. buses. Uh, parking is, would be super expensive in Europe. So they force so, people out of their cars. Yeah, so people would be more likely to take public transit. Yeah. That way, you know, you can shift that burden onto something that's more sustainable. Uh, yeah, that's the future. Whether anybody wants it or not, that is the future because the future to continue what we're doing now is outright suicide. There's no question about that. Yeah. Um, everybody should read, uh, this, this is in Wednesday's, I guess today's paper, October the 2nd, the column by Tom Fletcher. He completely disagrees with everything we're talking about and, and he basically gives, I guess, the oil and gas corporation version of, uh, of, of climate change. Well, he considered himself to be a skeptic, you know. Yeah. And it's interesting. I remember I told you about the 95% certainty versus 5%. Yeah. So he, he finds himself in the 5% category, yeah. you know. Uh, he's in the 5% category, but he's the guy with the column in the, uh, right. in the newspaper. And it's really sad because, you know, for a lot of people that might read that paper, they'll be confused at best, right? They may, may think that the, the discussion is still ongoing, that the scientists haven't figured it out yet. Well, they have figured it out. They figured it out already 25 years ago. But it's just the evidence gets stronger and stronger, and that's just how science works. You know, you have a theory, and then you, you, you collect evidence that basically supports one or the other theory. Well, we're talking the scale is like this, right? It's 95% certainty that it's happening and that we're responsible, and 5% is uncertain. Oh. And on that point, we're going to have to leave. Thank you very much, Werner Simbeck, and thanks for watching Citizens Forum.